Hey everyone, welcome back to the workshop. Artist Empire here, and in today's fun scroll saw project video, we're not going to completely make something, but I'm going to show you guys how to do production work on the scroll saw as well as maximizing your scroll saw table by cutting out something that's oversized beyond the throat depth of the scroll saw you may be using. Now, my friend Jim at Shop Dog Turnery on Instagram reached out to me and said he had a collaboration idea for me to cut out some blanks for him, and that's what we're doing. I'm doing my part, and then I'll I'll return the pieces to him where he will finish them again I said we're not doing the whole project in this video I'm just hopefully showing you guys some tips and tidbits that might help you in your scroll saw journey now behind me you can see I've got a stack of blanks here I've got to cut out 35 in total and to let you guys know I've already cut out the first five off camera and done a little test runs but this is what we're going to be making these cross cut saws now I've got to be careful to how I cut these out on the scroll saw because all of them are pre-drilled all 35 of them to where the handles will go in these and then Jim will pick up the process and finish these off by putting the decorations and all on the saw blade itself in his workshop so really really neat now this is cherry material three quarter inch thick so it's very hard we're going to cut out about three of these with one scroll saw blade and then flip it out because we do not want to have burn marks on the cherry wood but it's just one long continuous cut and what I'm going to show you on the scroll saw is how to feed in from the left side and the right side of your blade so it's very key to be ambidextrous on a scroll saw if you're going to be attempting something like this I've had to unplug the foot switch on my scroll saw the Delta scroll saw we use in the videos because I'm going to have to stand up and do all of this and I've just got it wired back the way it is where the on off switch toggle at the top works just as it's supposed to as opposed to pressing down that foot switch Jim has also kindly supplied me with all of the patterns that he's made this nice little holder for him and they're just on pieces of paper and I will quickly attach them with the same clear packing tape that I do on all of them and there you see more of them down in the cavity there so really neat way of packing that I really like that idea so what I'll do is take another bundle of five of these unwrap them double check that I've got the holes on the right side attach the pattern and we'll get started And before we get started, I know I'll get asked what a finished piece will look like, and here is a picture of a finished one. Keep in mind, I'm just cutting out the profile of the blade, and Jim will be turning the handles and doing the engraving. Over here on the workbench, I'll take my Swiss Army knife and unpack a pack of five of the blanks. And making sure the holes are on the proper side, I will attach the pattern with clear packing tape. The tape helps reduce friction and burn marks on the hard cherry wood. But after I get it attached, we will move the camera and I'll try to reiterate what I'm trying to teach and accomplish in this video. And now that the pattern is attached with clear packing tape, I want to go into a little bit more depth about what we're trying to achieve here in this video. And as you've seen, I attached it with clear packing tape. I won't show you guys attaching the other four patterns for the other four blades we're going to be cutting out. It's just a rinse and repeat of everything. And I was careful to make sure that those holes that Jim had drilled are on the top side of it where he will attach the handles to it later on in the video again he will turn those as primarily what he is known for a wood turner and I am a scroll saw artist and what I'm really trying to teach in this video is how to feed from both sides of the blade and maximize your scroll saw's throat depth now this piece is 24 inches in length and of course I have a 20 inch scroll saw and you can see it bumps into the back without completely going to the end of the material. I have about three and a half to four inches of material still sticking out here. So the question would come up in someone's mind, how do I cut this out? Now spiral blades are not lending itself to this project because with the nature of the saw blade, you want those teeth to be as nice and sharp as they can be to where when this piece is awarded, it looks as good as it can be. So I have a number five ultra reverse tooth blade installed here and what we're going to be doing is feeding to the right side of the blade for part of this and then flipping it around and feeding to the left side of the blade meaning you're ambidextrous on the scroll saw. Now I'm primarily left handed so I always want to feed into the left side of it. I feel I have better control. But there is times like this instant here where I'm going to have to go to the right side. Now what I'm going to be able to do is go in and cut out to maybe a little farther past the halfway point remove that waste wood and then flip it 
to continue the cut and then we can remove the pattern and proceed. But this is a very useful skill to have and I usually have the camera set up over here behind the fan to where it prominently shows the subscribe button and I'm not going to be able to do that because when this piece starts swinging around it would hit the tripod. I'm going to try to set the tripod up in a few different angles while we cut out all five of these saw blades here today just so hopefully you can get a better understanding of body movement, how I position myself. You guys know the scroll saw is on an angle and that's not going to play a factor with me standing up and matter of fact it's really comfortable to have the scroll saw at an angle. But let me get my dust mask on, my ear protection on, get some music going and we're going to get started. And over here at the scroll saw we will begin the scrolling process. Again this is three quarter inch cherry material so I am taking my time and letting the blade do the work. Cherry is a harder material and wood so it has a tendency to burn due to the friction of the blade and the heat generated even on a table saw or a scroll saw so I'm just taking my time. And when we get about halfway through, I will cut through and remove the waste wood and flip the piece around and begin feeding from the other side. And this is essentially a form of being ambidextrous by being able to cut and feed into both the left direction on the scroll saw as well as the right side. And it's very handy that you learn this technique if you're ever wanting to attempt larger projects like this on the scroll saw. But we now have one done and I'll move the camera and attach another pattern to another piece and begin again. And I move the camera around for all five of the cuts on this video just to hopefully show you guys a good visual of how I position my body and how I move the piece around. When you begin scrolling these pieces there's a lot of material hanging out in open air. So you have to be very careful with how you handle it. And once more of the piece gets onto the scroll saw table, it becomes more stable and easy to follow the cut line. But again, taking my time and letting the blade do the work. And I'm so thankful that Jim trusted me with this project. He paid me a high compliment by saying that I was quicker by being able to cut this out with one pass on a scroll saw than having to do multiple passes and waste a lot of time on a CNC machine. So I really appreciate that and it's very humbling to hear such high praise from a master woodworker. And I am by no means perfect. There will be minor discrepancies in each of these award pieces that we are cutting out here today. And we are now already done with the second one and I'll move the camera and attach another pattern and begin again. And I said award pieces because that is what these are ultimately going to end up being. There are going to be awards for the logging industry. Once I get all 35 of the saw blades back to Jim, he will turn and make the handles and then do all the engraving on the saw blade itself that we're cutting out here. If you guys like what you're seeing, I would highly encourage you to subscribe to my channel and also follow me across all of my social medias under the Artisan Pirate name. I'd really appreciate the support. And we are approaching finishing the third blade. And I will also change out the scroll saw blade after this cut and install a new one and file the back side of it to help with those tighter turns. And I'll move the camera and attach another pattern and begin again. And hopefully this angle that I'm showing you here help show you guys that even though I'm standing up and the scroll saw is at the angle that I'm comfortable scrolling, I'm not hunched over, I feel little to no fatigue in my shoulders and my neck. And you can see that the piece is fully supported once we get it well and truly into the cut line. And you can also see how I'm stepping back when I swing the piece around. And if you guys like me trying these new angles for filming at the scroll saw, please let me know down in the comments. And I'll be happy to do these in future videos where we do a full scroll saw project. But now we have four done and we will begin the fifth and final one for this video, completing a total of 10 that I will already have done with this one of the 35 that I need to do for Jim. And I figured that this overhead view here 
would really show how big the piece is compared to the scroll saw throat depth and also illustrate me stepping back each time I swing the piece around while cutting. That would be very hard to do if you were sitting in a stool while scrolling. And I am accustomed to scrolling while sitting down, but this was just the proper way to do it with a piece so large. And we've already began cutting through the other side and continuing our cut to finish up the fifth one. And it takes me around 12 to 15 minutes to scroll out each of these. Once again, just taking my time and letting the blade do the work. But once I get done with this one, we will wrap up the video so I can continue making these blades off camera. And here we have the completed crosscut blades. Now this is all I'm doing on my end. They are cut out of three quarter inch cherry completely on the scroll saw and I think they all cut amazingly well. Here is the five that we've done in today's video and I'll lay these aside and just hold up one for video purposes. But they all cut extremely well. I took my time and let the blade do the work. I did not want no burn marks on none of the teeth going down here. And now once I get all 35 of these cut out, I now have 10 done because I've done five before we ever filmed the video. Video, I will lay them all out and just do one marathon sanding session to get my nice finished sanding on the top and back side here and I was careful when lining up all of the patterns that I was sure to put the holes on the correct side that Jim had already pre-drilled he is going to turn the handles and put them on it and then also do the decorations for the awards that these are going to eventually and ultimately be so really really cool I'm happy to collaborate with Jim Barber he's an amazing wood turner and makes some other amazing things out of wood and I highly encourage you guys to go follow him on Instagram and on his social medias I'll leave them linked down in the description box as well as all of mine but really really neat it takes around 15 minutes to scroll out one of these and I hoped in today's video it was my mission and I hope I accomplished it to show you guys the meaningfulness and the versatility of being able to be ambidextrous on the scroll saw to not only be able to feed in your primary way for me being left-handed it's the left way but also feed into the right way again I'm a little bit uneasy on the right way and once that you get it started you know you have all this material hanging off but once you feed a little bit farther into the blade it becomes more stable of a cut if that makes any sense but I'm having a lot of fun making these and I'm gonna have a ton of cherry scrap wood for the wood stove for the coming winter months and the cooler months but I'm having a lot of fun here and it's just showing you guys how to do things here and I feel that that is my job to inspire educate and elevate you all to the next level of your hobby especially if you're on the scroll saw like me all the time and I hope you guys appreciated all of the different angles for all five of the blades we used a different camera angle and I hope you guys appreciate that I was just trying to show you the best way I know how the way that I was standing I wasn't hunched over you know I shot one angle from above one from far back you know just to show my position and while standing up scrolling and again the scroll saw is on an angle and I'm not hunched over and it's a very comforting cut I'm doing about five of these a day because you do not want to be fatigued you know stretching your arms out like that give your body time to rest as always now I'll probably cut out a few more today and then go right back into production mode tomorrow and for now it's senseless to keep filming the process as now it's just a rinse and repeat of what I have already shown you guys but I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and if you're new here please subscribe to the channel and also follow me across all of my social media feeds under the artisan pirate name as always links to all my social medias as well as ways to contact me will always be linked down in the description box below these videos that's about all for this one and remember guys if I can make it or do it so can you. I'm the Artisan Pirate. Take care, and I'll see you guys real soon.